Hey everybody, Nicole here from Hair of the Dog and welcome back to the podcast. Today we are going to be talking with Lisa Asp from Tangerine House of Design based in Minnesota and you might know her as one of the masterminds behind the Animal Image Makers Conference. Well today we are going to be demystifying print competition and by the end... I hope that you will be ready to throw your hat in the ring for the upcoming Animal Image Makers print competition this April. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. If you're a pet photographer ready to make more money and start living a life by your design, you've come to the right place. And now, your host, pet photographer, travel addict, chocolate martini connoisseur, Nicole Begley. Hey, everybody. Nicole here from Hair of the Dog, and I am here with Lisa Asp from Tangerine House of Design. You also know her as the um, brainchild behind AIM, Animal Image Makers, which we'll be talking about that in a little bit as well. Welcome to the podcast, Lisa. I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be a part of it. Of course, of course. So yeah, before we get started, why don't you just give um, everyone a little background on you, how long you've been in photography, and you know, just a little bit about your journey. Sure. Yeah, I started my photography way back in college. So I've been doing this for a long time. I'm one of those who got a part time job while I was in college at a Sears portrait studio. <laughs> That's kind of how I started with it. And then um, from there, you know, I, I felt very limited on creativity and all of that kind of stuff. It was a great way to learn how to work with people, but left there and went, went to a private studio where I could be creative and do kind of whatever I wanted to. And then moved to Michigan. That was in Minnesota. I grew up in Minnesota. Yep. I moved to Michigan when my husband went to grad school. So worked there for a couple of years. And I was the director of photography at a large company that did events and large groups and graduations and that kind of stuff. So I kind of oversaw the, the photography department there. And then after two years in Michigan, we went out to Connecticut and lived out there for 11 years and um, started out there working for a photography studio, husband and wife owned small business. And after a few years, that's when I opened my business. So that was back in in 2003, I opened my my first studio. And so I was there for eight years. And then um, my husband was offered a job back in Minnesota. So we jumped at the chance to come back and be by friends and family and kind of come back to our roots. So 2011, I moved back to Minnesota and opened my studio and uh, pet photography took off for me at that point. Up to that point, I was doing a lot of families and kids and high school seniors and kind of everything, everything portrait related and did some pets as well. And that was one of those things that not a lot of people were doing in 2011. And it was one of those things. There's so many photographers in Minneapolis that I had to figure out what I wanted to do and what direction I wanted to go in because there was so much competition and nobody knew me. I was opening a brand new business. So what could I do and what did I do well that other people weren't weren't doing? So it was easier for me to uh, find clients. And for me, that was pet photography. And yeah, I started doing sessions and working with some rescues and doing some fundraisers and it took off. And ever since then, I've been almost pet exclusive. So oh, yeah. wow. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Gosh, 2003 is when you started your business. Can you believe it? That's like... I, it's not that long ago, but it, you know, in the world of, you know, pet photography yeah. and just photography businesses in general, um, you've seen a lot of changes in the industry for oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Huge changes. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, digital was was just a thing when I like when I moved to Connecticut and I was working yeah. for that other company, I had previously worked in labs and done some of that kind of stuff. So I had some of that knowledge. So they were just transitioning to digital and they decided to put their own lab in as well. And so they bought this huge printer and they didn't know how to run it. And yeah. so well, I was running their lab and I was assisting in the studio and, and doing all sorts of stuff, which was fun. But yeah, I wanted more. I wanted I wanted to do my own thing with it. And so, um, but yeah, you know, it was really funny because of course the cameras, the digital cameras way back then were just awful. <laughs> like they were amazing because it was new right. and it was digital and like you could do so much with it. And, uh, but I look back now and even you know, like my first digital camera, like, I don't know how I even printed a wall portrait with that thing. It, right. like, three, three megapixels or you know, right, whatever. Right. But, um, yeah, you know, I've been working with Photoshop since before they had layers available, <laughs> like everything was done on one layer. And so it's, it's really been a whirlwind of changes since I have been a part of the industry. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Have you seen, it was the, the Photoshop where they gave like, you know, Joel Grimes, Ben Shirk, amazing digital artists, like the very first op thing of Photoshop. They're like, here, go ahead. And they're like, uh, 
wait. <laughs> exactly. It's <kind> of very comical. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. That's fantastic. So, wow. Yeah. Congratulations on almost 20 years of rock in the photography industry. I love it. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about print competition yeah. and specifically the international print competition through PPA. So for those of you guys out there, there's a lot of different print competitions. WPPI has one. I mean, there's various ones. All the rules are different. So today we're going to focus on the print competitions that are in the PPA uh, network. So the IPC affiliates yep. and things like that. So, um, so Lisa, when, when did you get involved with print competition? How did that start for you? <sighs> Boy, gosh, I don't know. I don't remember, honestly, when I got involved. It was when I was living in Connecticut and I joined the PPA affiliate out there, the Connecticut PPA. Yeah. And um, I think the first year or two that I was a part of it, I didn't, you know, I didn't really know anything about print competition, but, you know, started seeing the print galleries, you know, you go to their conventions and they've got all the prints hanging there. And of course, this is before digital or like when digital was just starting, but there were no digital competitions. Everything was printed. And so it was really fun, though, because you could walk through the print displays and you could see what people were doing. And um, and then the judges were all there, too. So you could ask questions. And that, it was so cool. And it was such a learning opportunity. And so I'm like, all right, I've got some kick ass images, I'm going to enter. <laughs> of course, you know, your first year or two, you don't do so well. <laughs> you think you're going to do well, but you really don't do so well. But you know, you got to start somewhere and you got to just jump in and go for it. And you learn so much through the process. And you know, again, when you're able to ask either the judges or people who've been in your shoes before and who know what they're talking about, what's going on and why your image didn't score as well as you thought, or how come this or how come that it's, it's such a great learning experience. And the more you do it, actually, the more you learn and the more you start pushing yourself to try new things and learn new things. And I think overall, you just become a better photographer, not just for competition, but for your clients as well. And that's really ultimately the goal here is to be the best you can be to produce the best work that you can so that your clients get the absolute best and you can attract new clients that way as well. Yeah, I agree 100%. I always like to say that creativity is something that, you know, if you feed it, it grows. I used to consider myself not a creative person at all, and definitely much more linear minded. But the more that I, you know, got involved in print competition, I started seeing some different things, trying some new things. And then it starts opening up new ideas. And I now have like a Trello board of all sorts of crazy print competition ideas. Most of them I haven't actually done yet, but they're there. The ideas are there. Yeah, I need to yeah. do them. Um, that's, a big, that's a big first step is, is yeah. getting those ideas and, and having some inspiration because that's, that doesn't come easy. It doesn't come easy yeah. for a lot of people. So yeah. yeah and it, it didn't come easy for me, but it was definitely one of those things where you start to do a little bit. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is not as hard as I was making out to be. I was building this up as this big, awful thing in my head. Um, yeah. The other thing that I learned tremendously from print competition that has has really improved my client work is just learning all sorts of new tricks of, you know, like I am 100% confident I can go into any client session and no matter what is thrown at me with the lighting and the dogs and the behavior and really anything yeah. I can, I have the tools now to, to create that, even if it's, you know, Oh, this puppy won't stand by the older dog. Okay. Let's photograph that one separately. And let's bring the puppy over here. Now let's photograph those together and I'll just put it together in Photoshop. Yeah. You know, we don't want to say I'll do it in Photoshop, but it's nice to know we can if we need to. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it's I think it's so important to learn those skills. And and like you said, not even just for print competition. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've I've I photographed dogs years ago while I was still in Connecticut who live together in the same house, but they can never be in the same room because right. they, they fight. But the owners thought it would be a great idea to have the dogs photographed together. <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> we're not doing that. If they fight, if they're in the same room, like, why would you think that's going to work to have a photo of them together? So yeah, photograph this one, photograph uh -huh. that one, put them together later. And that's the way that it works. And you know what? They're, they're thrilled with the, with the images that way. But it's one of those things that you've got to have the skills in order to do that. And you've got to do it well, because if you don't do it well, it's not going to look good for your clients and for sure not for print competition. The judges can see all of those flaws. The judges are so well trained that any flaws or any technical things, they're going to pick up on it and your score is going to suffer as a result. So yeah. yeah, it's a great way to learn those things and push yourself to learn more. Absolutely. Yeah, gosh, um, I can't even remember when I started either. I've done 
five, five IPCs. I took a couple year break because I just got busy. So it's what, 2020? It must have been like 2013 that I had my did my first one. 2014, which just blows my mind. Yeah, it's been fantastic. I don't even remember how I got started or why necessarily I got started. I think it was one of those things where it's like, oh, I started to learn more about it. I didn't had joined, we didn't really have an affiliate near us. I was a member of our Triangle PPA, like our Pittsburgh area PPA for a couple of years before it disbanded. But the PA one was based out of like more Eastern PA and it was kind of a pain pretty far for me to go for meetings and things like that. So I didn't really do that. So I was like first straight into IPC. I did take a course. I had some wonderful mentors like Barbara Brightsmeter and a couple other people that really helped me and gave me some feedback, which is, oh my gosh, so important. When you guys are getting started in print competition, reach out to people that are doing it. And most of us are really happy to give you feedback because we've been in your shoes. Yeah. <laughs> and we remember what it was like. And um, and we, you know, the, the great thing about print competition is you're not competing against each other. Like everyone's kind of competing against themselves. We want, we want to cheer our friends' images on, the other images. So the more the merrier, which right. is just, you know... Yeah. And, Fantastic. you know, just kind of a little a little side note, similar to what you're just saying. Yeah. Uh, if for anybody who watched the Grand Imaging Awards this year at the International Print Competition, um, which just wrapped up in January, you know, that there's an animal. And hold award. on. Congratulations, Lisa, oh. for winning one of the Grand Imaging Awards. We can't have a talk about print competition without throwing a congratulations to you. Thanks. That was a total shock, but I'm not even going to that category. <laughs> I want to talk about the animal portrait category. Um, You know, they, they pick the top 10 images in the competition, which is super cool. And one of the things that I love so much about the animal ca- uh, the animal community that we're all a part of here is that it's really a very close-knit community and, and everybody supports one another. And I love that. The top 10 images are all, uh, I was lucky enough to be one of the nominees in that every single image that was in there was made by somebody who I consider a friend, somebody I know personally because I'm involved in the community. And we, like the 10 of us and a couple of other people actually had a Zoom meeting going during the awards ceremony because we were so disappointed we couldn't be on stage together as a group that that was our way of doing it this year since it was all virtual. And it was so much fun to be able to cheer one another on. And and I said to so many people, I don't really care who wins because it's going to be a friend of mine. And that's the way it ended up. And that's one of the things that I love about this community. Yeah, I agree 100%. So yeah, so let's talk a little bit about IPC of just, um, you know, how it works. We talked about why people might want to do it. But maybe we can just give a, a really quick overview of just like, what it is or the, the, you know, just the basics of how that usually works. <laughs> what it is is actually a huge question. <laughs> yeah, right. I know it'll be a high level because I think to right. really explain all the nuances, this podcast could go on for like two hours, oh, but uh, we can, we can go high, high level. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. No. So there are different levels of, of competition through PPA and its affiliates. Um, there's a, there are local affiliates, there are state affiliates, and then there are district and international. And most people, I would say when you're starting out with print competition, you want to probably start at either your local or your state level if you're a member of the affiliate. And you should be a member of the affiliate because there's so much great education and so much great networking going on through the affiliates all over. And especially this year, you know, with virtual, they're all, you know, having a tough time right now. So I think it's really important to support them. And and then you get to be a part of that community as well. And it's it's much like our our dog and animal community where we all support one another. It's, it's the same thing in the affiliates. They're great people and definitely go out. But that'll give you the opportunity then to compete in their in their competitions and and be eligible for awards. Um, now, recently, in recent years, you can compete in almost any competition. You're just not typically eligible for awards, but that's great for feedback. So regardless, you can start at your local, you can start at your state level, and then you go on to the Professional Photographers of America level. And they've got Typically each year, last year was a little different. They've got a district competition in the spring and that's usually made up of um, what, what, like seven, eight states roughly like in your uh-huh. region. And then um, from there, you can send your images on to the international competition level. Now, there are people who skip all of that and go straight to the international, which is totally fine too. I like to kind of work my way up because you get feedback every single time. And every single time, one of the judges might see something different in your image. So you can go in and you, you can tweak it and you can make it that much better for when you get to that international level. 
Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And um, this past year, yeah, it was a little bit different without districts. So I found it really stressful to have to go straight to IPC because I've always done districts. And usually I at least get a couple merited and I'm like, okay, I at least maybe have to switch out one or sometimes I get them all done in districts. And you're like, all right, get to relax for next year. But yeah, this year was really stressful to put my case together because you have to pick four. So um, yeah, four images. And yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, what to do? And there's there's a challenge sometimes with doing a whole bunch of different states because I started doing, I did AIM, I did my North Carolina PPA, and I think I entered one other just online random state just to get a little more feedback on a couple images. And there was one image in particular that did merit at IPC, but it like squeaked by at PPNC. I don't think it merited at AIM or maybe it didn't merit at the other one. Actually, I didn't put it in, P- in, in North Carolina one, I don't think. Anyway, regardless, it was the title was forgotten. It was in the illustrative category, which there's different categories, portrait, illustrative, and all sorts of stuff. Like I said, if we went in all of the details of print competition, this would go on forever. But we'll, right. we'll leave you with some places where you can learn more. Yes. But I think sometimes it comes down to like, if you just really, really love and feel like feel an image that is just like, man, this is a piece of my heart and soul. I need to enter it. You know, it always depends on the panel of judges you get at the day. But yeah, I was I was happy that that one made it through. <laughs> good. Yeah, good. yeah it's, it's a funny thing because, you know, one of the pieces of advice that I always heard when I was starting out is never enter your own kids in print competition because, and it's probably the same thing with your, your own pets, because you get so attached to those images and you just love them so much. And it's really difficult to see the flaws in your images mm-hmm. when it's your own kids. And you need to kind of look at your work a little bit more objectively. And you need to look for those things that are holding it back that, you know, any flaws, technical or, or whatever. And and when you have something that is so dear to you and means so much to you, it's, it's, it is kind of risky because it can be so incredibly disappointing if it doesn't do as well as you want it to do. Um, and, and that's disheartening. And I know a lot of people who get really frustrated and just are like, all right, I'm done. I'm, I'm not competing anymore. I don't get it. I'm done. It's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> because they just need to step back and they need to look at it through somebody else's eyes. And that's a really hard thing to do when you're looking at your own work. And that's, I think, why it's so important to to have people, whether they're mentors or judges, uh, people who can give you feedback and talk to you one on one about your image and, and what works and what doesn't work. And um, but you also need to be careful that you don't talk to too many people because you're going to get different advice from every single person. And that's overwhelming and confusing and that kind of thing as well. So find, you know, maybe two or three people who you really trust and who you know does well in print competition and knows what they're talking about and listen to those people. Don't ask 10 different people because that's just going to be too much. Yeah, absolutely. And what is a beautiful, incredible client image that it's a beautiful 40 by 60 on the wall your client loves, it's an amazing marketing image, might not make for a good print competition image. So just because something that like an image that you love, you know, you find out that, oh, this might not do very well in print competition. It's just because it's a little bit of a different animal. So just have to take that kind of feedback with a grain of salt and know that, you know, you're getting feedback on something very specific and how to, you know, make this image better or what images work best for this particular, you know, outlet. Yeah. 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 Agree. And, and same thing, like people will post their images on Facebook and, you know, they'll get like hundreds of likes from their clients and their friends and everybody else. And then they, they're they like, oh, this image rocks. I'm going to submit it in print competition. And it totally bombs in competition. And it's the same thing. There's a very specific set of criteria. And with PPA and, and affiliates, um, they call that the 12 elements of a merit image. And we can link that. We'll link that. Nicole, you can link that, yeah. right? Yeah, we'll link that in the show notes. And, and those 12 things are the things that the judges are looking for in competition. And some of those are impact. Like it has to have really strong impact in order to do well. Um, another one is technical excellence. If you, like I was talking about earlier, if you've got flaws, technical flaws, that's going to hold you back. They're looking for creativity. They're looking for style and composition. Like there are 12 very specific things. And if you can get an image that it contains all 12 of those things, you are going to kill it in print competition. And it's, <laughs> You know, I think of it like a cheat sheet, like they're telling you exactly what you need to do. And then you just have to figure out how to do it. And that's the hard part. (laughs) 
Yeah. 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 And I, I feel like a lot of people too, when you start off, you're like, okay, this is the box I need to play in. This is the type of images that you usually create for print competition, but then you get a little bit more comfortable. And then you start like expanding that box a little bit. Be like, Hey, like I put one of my selfie dogs in for, um, it didn't loan, but it did merit, um, you know, wide angle dog taking a selfie you know, not a traditional print competition. But at that point, I'm like, I understood those 12 elements. I'm like, all right, this has storytelling, this has yeah. impact, it is technically correct. And, and you know, it did merit. So yeah, so just because I think a lot of people start to get turned off by print competition, because they're like, I'm an outdoor natural light photographer. Um, everything is studio, which is hogwash, because mm -hmm. I've had multiple natural light loan images loan, like they they've, for, and the, for you guys out there too, they're like, wait, merit or loan? What's the difference? Right. We should, we should probably go over we'll that. Super that. <laughs> you want to, do you want to explain that really quick, Lisa? Yeah, sure. So traditionally this year, again, things were a little bit different. Um, in the past, judges have scored on with numbers. So you get a number typically somewhere between about 65 and 100, we'll say, and you had to get a score of about 80 or more exactly 80 or more in order to get what they call a merit image. And with that, through PPA, you get basically a point and you earn points to get your master of photography degree or your craftsman degree. So your 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 goal really is to earn merits or points toward those degrees. If you get a merit image, if you're lucky enough to get a merit, then they typically would go through a whole second set of judging in order to get a second merit on that. And that is what they call a loan print. And the loan print um, came from, historically, they would have the, the printed images and they had a traveling collection that they would loan out of those best images that they would loan out to different, for different exhibits um, at different places. And that's why they called them loan prints. Now, this year, they're going to get rid of the word loan. They're not going to be called loan prints anymore, which is really going to be weird for those of us who have been competing for a long time. No, so, I don't know how I feel about it. Like I, I totally get it, but yeah. yeah, I totally get it too. <laughs> I, like nobody knows what loan means anymore. It's a very confusing right. word for people who don't know, but um, yeah, it's going to be a little different for those of us <laughs> who are like, loan. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what are they calling it now? I forget. Uh, uh, Image of excellence, I think, or something like oh, that. Okay, yeah, that so, doesn't have the same amount of loan. <laughs> no, it doesn't, but it, it makes That's sense okay. and, and it totally works. So, yes. yeah, so really your goal is to get an 80 or above. And now this this past year, they changed their scoring system as well. They got rid of the scores and it was just merit or no merit and then loan or no loan, which really expedited the, the judging. Mm -hmm. And I actually really liked it because when you're at that level that you're at the international competition, like you don't necessarily need the feedback. I don't think of the numbers anymore. The numbers are great for feedback, but that's what the earlier competitions are for. Mm -hmm. When you get to that point, you it's like an in and out. You either do it or you don't do it. You're there or you're not. And so a merit or a not, I thought that was great. And then everything that merited got judged a second time and it either went loan or it didn't. And I really liked that system a lot. Now, that being said, I, I don't necessarily like that for state competitions and local mm -hmm. competitions and that kind of thing. Cause I do think that the judging or the, uh, the scoring through judging is really great for feedback. There is a big difference between an image that scores an 80 and an image that scores a 90 or 95, mm -hmm. huge difference. And, yeah. and the more you watch and learn about scoring and judging and competition, the more you're going to understand what those numbers mean as well. That's, it's really hard to explain that in a it very is. Short time too. <laughs> There's um, a lot of state and local competitions when we have our, the judging of the, that competition, there's usually kind of a peanut gallery. It's usually called like the 79 club or something. Yeah. Because that's the one number you're like, Oh, I was so close. Right. Um, but we're in another room. So we don't bother the judges, but we have the feed. We can hear all the judging feedback. You're with your peers. They, you know, you get to can ask questions. There's yep. usually people in there that are well versed on print competition that will, you know, help you understand different things, answer yep. your questions. It's such a supportive community. So you guys, I, if you have local in I mean, you all have state if you're in the US, but if you have local affiliates near you or even your state, even if you have to go a little bit further, it's so worthwhile to join. It makes me really sad to see so many of these smaller organizations struggling financially because they bring so much to the table. Yep. And I, I think a lot of people, photographers think, oh, well, 
I can only learn from, I'm a pet photographer. I can only learn from pet photographers. <laughs> and that's just not the case. I mean, I would go yeah. to the one in Pittsburgh, our triangle PPA that we used to have. And there'd be somebody, I'd even look at their work and maybe it wasn't work that even resonated with me. You know, it's not work that I wanted to do. It's a whole different genre. I would still go and I would still take away a nugget every single time you have something to learn from someone. Right. So gosh, yeah, and go I think, join your local affiliates people. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I think that's the thing is that if you can learn, I mean, if you look at the cost to join, it's really not that expensive. And then divide that out by the number of meetings that they mm -hmm. offer every year. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's pennies. And if you can honestly take one thing from each of those speakers, I mean, it pays for itself tenfold. Yeah. So, and yeah. then not even to mention like the, the, the networking mm -hmm. and the relationships that you can build with your local community. And that's huge because then you can start referring people back and forth, people that you know and that you trust. And you don't want to do that with strangers because you don't know them. You don't know their business practices. But once you get to know them, that's and, and they get to know you even more mm -hmm. importantly, um, that's huge. So yeah, support them. <laughs> yes, absolutely. For sure. All right. So hopefully, Lisa, people are listening and they're like, hmm, I'm interested. I want to learn more about this. Where would they go to learn more? What recommendations do you have? And then I'll share some of the, the the places that I learned from too. Sure. Well, one of the easiest things that you can do right now is check out printcompetition.com. Printcompetition.com is the website, the place that most of the affiliates are using to run their print competitions. You can join as a member. Um, and if you if you enter any of those, you have to join, but you can join as a premium member. And I think it's like maybe 15 bucks a quarter. It's really yeah. inexpensive. And you can actually look at all the archives from years and years and years of print competitions. You can look at um, by association, you can look by maker, you can look by score, you can look by category. I mean, there's so many ways to search this database. And then those that were challenged, and that's a whole nother thing that we haven't talked about with the judging is that the judges can challenge uh, the score of an image, and in which case there's going to be a discussion. And so if there was a discussion about an image, that's all recorded and all of that is there too. So it's such a huge learning tool just to go in and see what did well and why and, and listen and just learn through that for really inexpensive. So that's one thing that I would recommend. Um, there are people, there are mentors that you can get, um, whether they're local or online. And I know, uh, Nicole, you've, you've got some, a couple of, of things that you want to mention with that. So that's great. But you know, certainly for, for those animal photographers who are out there, who that's, I assume who's listening today, <laughs> um, AIM has such a great competition. Uh, we've been doing this for a few years now, and we've got hundreds and hundreds of images every year that are judged. And the thing that I love about our competition is that we use trained judges. Uh, we're hosted by the Twin Cities Professional Photography Association, which is the PPA affiliate. And so we kind of align with the PPA way of doing things and use PPA trained judges. And so these are people who know what they're looking for, who have gone through this already so many times, who really can give great feedback and are looking for things that are going to do well. And I'm telling you, the, the images that were in the Grand Imaging Awards this year, so many of them we saw previously at the AIM competition. And the coolest thing about that was that they learned, they tweaked their images, and then they got even better by the time they got to the international competition. Yeah, I was watching that AIM competition in the spring and I was just like, oh my God, these are the most amazing animal images I've ever seen. Just across the board, the the quality was off the charts. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah, for where you guys can learn, definitely check out that printcompetition.com. It is amazing. There is that premium membership if you want to join. Yeah, it's $14 or $15 every quarter. It's really affordable. You can also do some searching. It's much more limited on a free membership, but I think you can still see some things on there. So definitely go check that out. And I'm not sure if you have to be the premium member to stream the live like game day. It's free members can stream that. Yep. yep. Yeah. Anybody Perfect. can stream that. So yeah, so even if you don't join, like you can, it'll tell you on there what days and we're starting to get into print competition season here where the state affiliates and the local affiliates are doing that. And I'll say, you know, February 25th, this particular organization is, and you can log in to print competition that day on your free account and stream the actual print competition going on somewhere on the other side of the world, which is just a great way, again, to watch and learn. And then there's just so many people that are going to be willing to answer your questions. Some other really good resources are if you're a member of PPA, they have the Super One Day classes. I think they're still called Super One Day. They're not. 
No, they're not called they that changed? anymore. Okay, they, I was they, like, wait, I think just, they might have changed. <laughs> yeah, no, they're calling them now PPA workshops. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> and and like, yeah. what is a, what's a super one day? Like, <laughs> right, right. Uh, I'll probably be calling them super one day classes for the next decade. Exactly. Um, all right, but PPA workshops, formerly super one day, formerly super Monday classes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, anyway, check those out. They do those twice a year and they're basically workshops that other members will host um, just to earn some service merits to help, you know, raise up the industry. There's often someone teaching on print competition. That's actually how I got started is I took a Super Monday. <laughs> so it was way back then from yeah. Christine Walsh Newton in Ohio. Yeah. And she was one of my very first print competition mentors. And um, then I also... Uh, a year or two in, I took a class from Michelle Parsley from Elevate Your Art on her print competition class. Christine's not teaching print competition stuff any longer, but Michelle still is. She has that print competition class. It is phenomenal. Anything Michelle is teaching, if you want to learn it, she is an amazing teacher. Highly recommend. I'll link to that um, that link in the show notes as well. Uh, it's a wait list right now. I'm not sure when she's opening that class again, but you can put your email down and she'll let you know. And if you want to get to those show notes hairofthedogacademy.com slash five two will take you to those show notes. Um, and you can get all of the goodness links of print competition that we will put there. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, so I'm super excited back to aim animal yeah. image makers, super excited for this coming year for our print competition. What are the dates Lisa for this year? <laughs> Judging is going to be April 15th. Okay which is a Thursday. Yeah. Um, that is the first day of the, of the conference. And of course, you know, we're not through COVID yet. So last year's conference, we postponed a full year because of COVID right. and right. we're not do we're not, we're not, I am not postponing <laughs> another year, but we did have to make the decision um, so that we could go forward and plan what we're going to do. So we're doing a virtual yeah. conference this year, which is going to be awesome. We've got some really great speakers. Those are all on the website as well. So check that out. But competition is going to be, that's the only thing the first day. So that's Thursday, the 15th. Now, depending upon the number of images that are entered, we may end up adding an, an additional day of judging or a portion of the day. And I don't know if that'll be the day before or the day after. That'll We'll have to kind of wait and see. And, and we'll decide on that. We're, we almost have our judges put together. We have I've got one person that I'm waiting to hear back from yet. And once we have our full jury, then that will also go on the website. And oh my God, you guys, they're going to be awesome. <laughs> this is going to be like such a great competition. I'm so excited to have the jury that we have, like, it's going to just be awesome. Ooh, so yeah, so we did add, um, we've got so many great categories and we added another one this year. Our new category this year is bloopers, which is going <laughs> to be super fun um, because who doesn't get just those really goofy photos, you know? Right, <laughs> yeah. right. I love it. So yeah. really important question, Lisa, you know, IPC you can only enter four, but yep. AIM and most state affiliates, that is not the case, correct? That is not the case. Yeah, you can do... We may have limited it to like 15 or something like that, but you can do a lot. Uh, which yeah. is great. And the reason, I mean, we do that for a couple of different reasons. One, we've got so many different categories. So we want you to be able to do different categories. But two, you know, we're at that level where we want you guys to get the feedback so that you can go on to districts and IPC and know like, all right, these didn't do well. I'm throwing those out. These were my best four. I'm, I'm definitely going to move forward with those. And so that's why we do that. We want you guys to be able to try out a bunch of different things and see where things end up and and get the feedback that that you need in order to make those decisions going forward. It's it's such a great learning tool that we don't want to limit your learning. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Um if well if last year's any indication, I think you're definitely going to need to add that second day because it was yeah. there were a lot and it was yeah, it was fantastic. For those of you guys that are listening to this that are involved in your state or local organization that's a PPA affiliate, AIM is doing something awesome. I let um, PPNC know, which is North Carolina Professional Photographer Association, yeah. and um, they're looking into it and will probably be contacting you soon, hopefully, Lisa. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tell them about the awesome... Uh, just basically affiliate awards to help spread the word about how right. awesome animal photography is. That's right. Well, animal <laughs> photography is awesome. And that's the whole bottom line. Like we want the world to know. And we've really seen an increase in the number of 
animal images that have been submitted in competition, and we want to reward those makers. Um, it used to be that there were one or two that did, you just didn't see a lot, but because there are so many more, more and more affiliates are adding a category for animals, which I think is great. We're like one of the biggest advocates for animal photography. Obviously, we put together a whole conference about it. So what we are doing is uh, we are offering a print competition award for any affiliate who has an animal category. And the award is gonna include a beautiful trophy as well as free registration of that image at the Animal Image Makers Conference at the next one coming up. So any that happened between now and April, you can submit that image you know, to the April one. Any that happened after that, it would be the following year. But this is one of those things, if you guys are part of an affiliate, make sure that they know there's no charge to the affiliate for this. Like it, we're just gonna send you a free trophy. And um, it, it's awesome. We we really want animal photography to, to continue to increase in its visibility, in the uh, just technical excellence that we're seeing and the creativity that we're seeing with the animal images and what better way to reward those people than with a trophy. So yeah, we want the affiliates to have an animal category. So that's what we're doing. So if, if, yeah, that information is all on the Animal Image Makers website on the print competition or image competition page all the way down at the bottom. There's a link on all the way at the bottom of that page for the affiliates. So yeah, it's just a quick, easy sign up. I think we've got probably 12 or 13 of them signed up already, which is nice. awesome. We just launched this at the beginning of January. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Well, it just shows how popular pet photography or animal photography, I should say, is becoming. I mean, who doesn't who doesn't love looking at pictures of dogs and cats and horses and yeah. any other creature out there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so can I tell you about one other cool thing we're yes, doing? Of course. All right. <laughs> so another thing that we're doing this year that's brand new, again, as a way to help the animal photographers gain some credentialing for their clients is that we are offering an entire credentialing program through AIM, which is going to be super cool. So people can sign up for this and you collect points kind of like the degree system with like a master of photography degree, you're, you're gaining merits there. So you're collecting points. And once you reach the first level, you become an accredited professional of animal imagery. Cool. And then there are different categories from there. So we think it's going to be just a super cool way for animal photographers to stand apart from their competition to really show their professionalism and their dedication to the, their art. I love it. I love it. And even though I highly recommend, well, this year it's virtual, I do highly recommend that everyone attend the virtual one and go to the real life one next year when you can actually, you know, see people in real life again. But you don't have to be in attendance to enter the print competition, right, Lisa? That's correct. Yeah, anybody can do it from anywhere. And we do have a lot of people that can't make it, you know, it, the past couple of years, they haven't been able to come. Well, last year we had to from, you know, push it anyway. No but, one could go anywhere yeah, last nobody year. Nobody came last year and we still <laughs> had like hundreds of entries. So there you go. Yeah, no, this is open to anybody. Um, the competition is open to absolutely anybody. You can do one image, you can do 12 images. Like it's totally up to you. Yeah, we would love for you to come because there's nothing like being in person and being together and forming those bonds through the community so that you can consider these people your friends. It's really hard to get to know people on a personal level online. And I think that's the thing that everybody has been missing this past year without being able to travel and without being able to see one another and be together with people. And, you know, I talked to so many people who took part in the imaging, uh, imaging USA from PPA this year. And though they did a great job with the virtual conference that they had, the one thing that people were missing was the in-person, like seeing their friends from all over the place mm -hmm. and being able to spend time with them. And gosh, we've all been missing that as well. So yeah, I can't wait for all of this to be behind us and we can actually have our in-person conference again. So. Yes. Yes. So yeah, so you guys definitely, I expect all of you listening, I expect a record number of <laughs> animal entries into Ames print competition this year. Um, and also just to clarify too, um, I definitely support again, uh, PPA in their membership. I think it is a totally worthwhile investment if you're a professional pet photographer or photographer of any genre in the States, you do not have to be a member to submit to AIM print competition. I mean, literally, you can just submit, you know, you can have your neighbor submit an image if you want. You don't have to have any sort of like credentials to do that. So definitely participate. It starts to open up just a world of education. Yeah, gosh, it's the quickest way to improve your craft because you're just forced to like you're forced to take a hard look at the technical excellence of different images. And again, there's images, for instance, in my sales room, I have a 40 by 60. It's Lauren, it's a silhouette with Lauren and her horse from Pittsburgh, big, beautiful blue sky. 
gorgeous image. Um, it did not do well because there was some banding on the digital image in um, for the print competition, which I didn't see on my side. And I have it printed as a 40 by 60 and it looks great. So there are these little things like that for print con- competition that it's just you know, so helpful to just to see these things that I never would have even noticed that about that file. And okay, I left out and it looks good here. But you know, some other time it might actually show up and I need to be aware of these things. And gosh, you just learn so much. Yep. And with that kind of stuff too, I mean, that's one of those simple things that you missed, but somebody else may have just like immediately seen. It's great to have a buddy who you can just send your stuff to and say, give me a quick, like, these, I think these are ready to go. Do you see anything weird? Yeah, right, right. (laughs) No, and just that last minute, like somebody else may have seen that. And it's great to have a buddy to do that kind of thing with. So Mm -hmm. yeah, Yeah, I find buddies are really helpful too for narrowing down like the beginning of the year. It's like, oh my gosh, I've got to start picking out some images here. Here's like a whole bunch of things. What what stands out to you that has some uh, potential to start working up for print competition? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Because we we tend to get a little bit too close to our own work sometimes. So it's really nice to have outside eyes at times. Yeah, perfect. Well, tell us, Lisa, again, a little bit about where they can find information for this year's conference, Barca Lounger, correct? Yeah. Yeah. We, we <laughs> needed that because people can stay home and sit in their own Barca lounger to take part. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really fun. Um, so yeah, the website is animalimagemakers.com. All the information is on there. Um, we do have a deal for what we're calling VIP registration, which is basically you're registering for 2022 and getting the entire virtual conference for free, Ooh, um, which nice. is really, really awesome. Um, so that's the best deal. But if you want to just come to the, the virtual conference only, it's a discounted price. We're not charging full price like we would need to for an in-person conference. So it's a great, great deal, great way to get the education, um, to test out like what we're all about and, and all of that kind of stuff. And again, you can stay home in your own Barca Lounger and take part. So we've got so much cool stuff planned. We are working so hard behind the scenes, pulling it all together. You know, when I, when I made this decision to let's do it virtually, I'm like, oh, that'll be easy. We'll just, you know, whatever. Oh my God, it is not. <laughs> There's so much, it's like planning an entirely different event. Mm -hmm. There's so much that goes into it. So we are working really hard behind the scenes, but it's, oh my gosh, I'm so excited the way it's coming together. And I can't wait. I just can't wait. So. It's going to be amazing. So the print competition is April 15th. What are the yep. days for the virtual conference? 16, 17, 16, 17 and 18th. So okay, it's four days all together, 15th through the 18th, which is a Thursday through a Sunday. Nice. nice. Yeah. So Lisa, and then what are the dates for next year's 2022? Gosh, that seems so far away. For the real life conference, if they wanted to do the VIP membership or the VIP registration and get access to both. Yeah, so VIP 2022 registration dates are April 14th through the 17th. So it's basically the same weekend, oh, nice. one day earlier. And then again, 2021, this year is going to be the 15th through the 18th. So you get awesome. both years with VIP. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Gosh, I love it so much. Let's wrap this up maybe by sharing oh, maybe your biggest takeaway from print competition or like the your what you're most grateful for from your years of print competition. Ooh. <laughs> or one of. I know sometimes it's hard to choose at the most. So they yeah. always say, like, ask your kid what's something fun you did today. So what's something you're grateful for? <laughs> Instead yeah, of well, the most it, grateful. <laughs> I think there are there are a few things, and I'll, I'll just mention them quick. And and then before I forget. I do have a download, a free download for everybody. Okay, perfect. Um, I would say there are a, a couple of things that has that make me addicted to print competition. <laughs> and I will admit that I'm a I'm an addict. <laughs> <laughs> there I are worse, it, worse things to be addicted to. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly. No, I love that it challenges me every single year. And you know, there are a lot of people who submit who you can pick out their work every single year. It kind of looks the same. It kind of feels the same. And that's fine because they've got their whole thing going. For me, I like to really challenge myself. And there are people that are always surprised when they see my work. Cause a lot of times I don't tell people, I don't show people in advance. Like it's like, I'll, I'll show my buddies to <laughs> find that banding or whatever the little issues are. But I really challenge myself to try different things. I try portraits. I try animal things. I try wildlife. I try landscapes. I try whatever I can try and make it the absolute best that I can. And I think that that for me, that challenge for me makes me a better photographer and it, and it keeps it really fun for me too. You know, we all kind of get burned out when we're doing the same thing over and over and over and over. And so I think to just to keep it really exciting, that's one of the things that I really value. I am lucky enough that I've, I've done well in print competition. And so I have some of those trophies that I have displayed in my studio. And so that's another one of those bonuses that when my clients walk in and they can see that kind of stuff, they know that I know what I'm doing 
doing and I can do it well because I've earned recognition. And, and then finally, I would say that because I've had that recognition through print competition, it's really opened a lot of doors for me for speaking for affiliates, for getting to know other people who are, you know, also at that level and getting respect from those people as well. You know, photography, even though it, there are so many of us, I think PPA has got like 30,000 members or something, but you know, when I was starting out, it was always those people that are like, oh, and (laughs) it's really, it's funny to go from that where like, nobody knows me. And I still feel like, like nobody knows who I am. Like, why the hell would they know who I am? I totally totally People are sending me friend requests online. And I'm like, how do you even know me? Like, that's just so (laughs) weird. And, but it's kind of cool to be able to have those relationships with some of those people that I've admired for so long. So yeah. I love it. I love it. Mine are very similar. I definitely the the creativity and the push to continue to improve my craft is by far I think the biggest benefit that has that I have gotten out of print competition because it's really easy to get complacent when your client works good and you have clients and like it's just kind of rolling. It's it's really easy just to be like, oh, I don't need to, you know, focus on learning more at this time, but Gosh, you know, we're always improving our craft and there's always more to learn. Like we can never learn everything photography and certainly not Photoshop related. So, you know, being able to to continue to up my game a little bit has been so very beneficial. And then, you know, not even just print competition related, but just in general related, the relationships I've formed from this whole pet photography thing has been just crazy. I was talking to my husband the other day, not that I can visit any of them, but I'm like, I have a friend in like every country. (laughs) You know, it's like no matter where I go, I can like call someone up, be like, hey, you want to go shoot? If I want to drag my camera with me. (laughs) I always drag my camera with me, always. (laughs) My my new R5 makes it a little bit easier to drag that gear because it's a little bit lighter. But uh, gosh, yeah, the relationships have been just fantastic. So yep. yeah, before we leave, you have a download too. So something else for you guys to go get www.hairofthedogacademy.com slash five two. You'll get all the links for all of the things. But yeah, tell us about the download. Yeah, okay. so, so I wrote a little thing about print competition just for you guys. I wrote a little guide that I'm calling my, my top five tricks for kicking ass in print competition. Oh, I like it. Yeah. So this is just for you guys. So if you want this, what I want you to do is grab your phone. Um, You guys might be listening on your phone right now. If not, just grab it. And you're going to text the keyword H-O-T-D, which of course we all know stands for hair of the dog. So H-O-T-D, you're going to text that um, to 844-PET. Togs, P-E-T-T-O-G-S, which is also 844-738-8647. And you will receive that guide within minutes. And we might also put a little extra bonus in there for you guys, because this isn't going to air until February and our early bird registration is going to be done by then for AIM. So yeah, there just may be a little secret um, code in there for a discount on uh, on registration just for the hair of the dog listeners. So, nice. um, so you definitely want that. So 844-PET-TOGS. Um, if you guys are outside of the US, be sure to include the number one before that number because it's, it is a US number. So um, yeah, so just do it. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see the images come in for, for, for print Oh my gosh. Yeah. And we'll all have a party on print competition. Maybe we'll have to have like a, well, you'll be working hard, but the rest of us will just be enjoying. We'll have to have like a a party zoom. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's so fun to be able to do that too. So it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I awesome. love it. Thanks so much, Lisa, for yeah. taking the time. Go ahead. And if you just before we leave, if people want to follow you online, tell us where they can find you all along the interwebs. Yeah, well, my studio is uh, Tangerine House of Design. So you can just Google that and you'll probably find my website and my Facebook and my Instagram and all that kind of fun stuff. Or uh a- uh, animalimagemakers.com for the website. And we've got, of course, Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And actually with Facebook, there's a there's a public facing group and then or a public page. And then there's a private group also that is only for animal photographers. So if you find the group, um, just submit your application and we're just going to accept you. There's a couple quick questions to make sure that you're actually a a pet photographer. Um, We're going to have interviews coming up with all of the speakers for the Animal Image Makers Conference this year. And so that's always just great free education right there. Um, We're also, I've got some interviews coming up with the uh, people who won the print competition categories last year. So they're going to give you guys some 
additional hints and tricks and tips and and just tell the stories about their images that won last year. Nice. So that's all going to be coming up very soon too. And I, I all the interviews, we've done this in the past as well. All of those interviews are still online from previous years. So you guys can go on there and listen to all of that as well. And again, it's just really great education and it's free. And I think they're usually like I don't know, 30 minutes, sometimes 45, because we're also long winded. We love to talk about what we do. So um, yeah, so great stuff. Definitely. Perfect. Yeah. If you want to email me the link to that group um, yeah. and the page, we'll add that to the show notes as well. For sure. Yeah. We'll Perfect. Do that. All right. Awesome. Thanks again, Lisa, for yeah. being here with us and everyone Thanks else. I will me. talk to you guys next week. Bye everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Hair of the Dog podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please take a minute to leave a review. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming episodes. One last thing. If you are ready to dive into more resources, head over to our website at www.hairofthedogacademy.com. Thanks for being a part of this pet photography community.